right now on five on your side at 10. A pretty impressive storm system out to our west is causing snow, severe weather, and a lot warmer temperatures to develop. How that impacts us into the overnight hours and whether or not severe weather is a threat for us. Counting down to the great American eclipse. In two days, the celestial show traveling across North America, including parts of the bi-state. I'm holding Kerwicki in Carbondale, Illinois, where thousands of eclipse watchers will gather in the coming days. Here, why researchers are using their eyes and ears to break down barriers along the path of totality. But first, a St. Louis sports equinox. A sea of Cardinals, Blues, Battlehawks, and City SC fans taking over downtown, catching their teams in action on the same day. It's well overdue. The city's been waiting for it, so it's really exciting to see. Thank you for joining us at 10 tonight. I'm Brent Solomon. For the first time in recent history, three major sporting events happening at one time in downtown St. Louis. Following your size, Annie Crawl caught up with Cardinals, Battlehawks, and City SC fans all converging in one place. The Cardinals kicked off the Saturday sports schedule with a win over the Miami Marlins. For fans, it was the start of a busy day in downtown St. Louis. We have no plans with anyone else but us. We were thinking, how many people will we run into that we know? Because there's so many games going on downtown. Everybody's downtown. Yeah, today. yeah. And also, we were wondering, how long are we going to be down here? We don't know. Could all be all day. day. Could be all, all day. day. Till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely all day if you're this guy, tailgating close to eight hours before the Battle Hawks long awaited home opener. Defensive players, they are ball hawks, and I'm a big fan of the defense. So I go by Ball Hawk One because of that. I was inspired by Hawk, an animal from the WWE, as you know. That's where the shoulder pads come in. Geared up for the now merged UFL League, along with fellow Battlehawk fan Toby Brown, known as the Beard. Oh, St. Louis Pride, when it comes to sports, I don't know any other city that can top St. Louis. Whether it was to watch the Cardinals, the Battlehawks, or City SC play in St. Louis, it was downtown that was the place to be for all of those teams on Saturday if you were a St. Louis sports fan. I mean, we're both from St. Louis, so I mean, we're both big supporters. I know I grew up watching the Cardinals my entire life, so yeah, it's fun. It's awesome to see all these teams coming together in one weekend. City SC season ticket holders Gregory and Mary Cross tell me they came to the soccer pitch four hours before for kickoff because of the giveaway. It's very specific uh, branded uh, ravioli, toasted ravioli merchandise that the team does and there's a limited supply so we came out early to make sure we got some. A deliciously distinct mark of St. Louis pride for a sports crazy town. Reporting in St. Louis, Annie Crawl, five on your side. And let's not forget the Blues. They're playing a road game against the San Jose Sharks as they continue to chase a playoff spot. Corey Miller will have a recap later in sports. Well, tonight we're looking ahead to Monday's total solar eclipse. Weather first meteorologist Gary Frank now with what we can expect. Yeah, good evening, Brent. Uh, you know, we're still trending in the right direction when it comes to cloud coverage, but we've got more of a breakdown on what exactly high cloud cover, low cloud cover, how that's going to affect the sunlight. Now, as we head into the overnight hours, it's going to be a lot different than it was 24 hours ago because, you know, we were talking about a frost and freeze, and now we're talking about thunderstorms that have crossed the state line from Kansas into Missouri. And while they're not severe, they're part of a system that is going to impact us tomorrow. And, and it's quite windy there as well. Temps still outside in the low to mid 50s and out to the west it's close to 60 degrees if not exceeding that now behind it much colder air but i think as we start to settle in we'll see a few storms by tomorrow morning our wind gusts right now still sit between 20 and 25 miles an hour and that's something i think you can expect into the overnight hours as our temps don't fall a lot upper upper 40s for the most part right around 50 degrees it's breezy we should stay relatively dry but i think as we watch that front settle in it's going to impact parts of our area tomorrow with clouds of course and rain early, but there are a few stronger storms that are possible. We'll talk about those areas that will impact us. We'll also break down the cloud coverage for your Monday afternoon eclipse forecast. Well, we're less than two days away now from that great American eclipse, which will travel across North America. Part of the path of totality will move through southern Missouri and Illinois, blocking out the sun in cities like Cape Girardeau, Farmington, and even Mount Vernon.
Right now, thousands of sightseers and scientists are traveling to both sides of the by state. Many consider it a once in a lifetime opportunity. Although it's actually the second time in seven years that we've seen a total solar eclipse. We begin our eclipse coverage with Five on Your Side's Holden Kerwicki in Carbondale, where that area will get over four minutes of darkness. Holden, lots of people heading there. That's exactly right, Brent. They're expecting 50,000 visitors in this town of just over 25,000. And so far today, I've met people from states across the Midwest and as far away as Florida. But overall, things are relatively quiet tonight. But for a group of SIU researchers, that's actually a good thing. As the moment of totality passes over Carbondale, SIU researcher Brent Pease will be like every other person along its path. I will be looking to the sky with my kids when this eclipse event comes through. However, the assistant professor in the Department of Forestry will also be keeping an ear out for what's happening around him. We have hundreds of recorders all along the path of totality across the United States. For 48 hours before and after the eclipse, audio recordings will be used to track how animals react to the celestial event. You know, there's been hundreds of years of written observations during eclipse. What happens to wildlife during these events? So we generally have some idea about what might happen. We typically see breeding birds quiet down. We'll see some nocturnal or crepuscular insects start to vocalize. There's some research suggesting that bees retreat to hives whenever the eclipse happens. While the project is purely scientific, it will help establish a baseline for wildlife management that Pease says will be studied for centuries. Yeah, it's really incredible. You know, we're basing a lot of this research that we're doing on written reports from the 1500s. So this is a this isn't a frequent event, right? So this is a slow build and we're just here in the right time at the right place to provide some information. The groundbreaking work will later be used as part of a soundscape project to break down barriers surrounding the eclipse for the visually impaired. While we're listening to the eclipse, there's a whole group of people in the United States and beyond that really can't see the eclipse the way that we are. So the Eclipse Soundscapes Project's partnering with the National Federation of the Blind as a way for them to engage and observe the eclipse through sound. This entire project is being funded by NASA. Pease says what makes this research so important is that it will be used as a baseline for the next 350 years, which is when this area will experience its next eclipse. Reporting live in Carbondale, Illinois, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. All right, great work, Holden. If you're going to watch the eclipse, make sure you have the right glasses. You need to protect your eyes. Three area stores are now recalling hundreds of eclipse glasses. Fink's Alps in Union, Missouri, B&H Market in Pacific, and Country Mart in St. Clair say their glasses don't meet safety standards. Customers are asked to return the glasses for a refund. If you want to make sure your glasses are safe, they must be ISO certified. So look for the number 12312-2. It will be somewhere on the glasses. For more information on the eclipse, just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen or go to KSDK.com. If you're not able to get outside on Monday, we have you covered. Tune in to Five on Your Side's live coverage along the path of totality. That's Monday from 1 until 2.30. You can also stream it on the 5 Plus app. Tonight, two teenagers are facing charges on a deadly crash in South St. Louis County Friday. Police say DeAndre Robinson and Patrick Ayton were racing each other on South Broadway when Robinson lost control, left the road, and then hit two construction workers. 34-year-old Chris Johnson died. His co-worker was seriously hurt and had to go to the hospital. Both Robinson and Ayton were charged with involuntary manslaughter and second-degree assault. Deadly crash investigation. A high ridge teen ejected from his motorcycle. Why police are looking for witnesses tonight. Tomorrow marks six months in the Israeli Hamas war. Why U.S. officials are preparing for another attack in the Middle East. Temperatures this morning started off in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, depending on where you were, but it's all about the wind shift. How that wind shift helps us overnight avoid this kind of freeze and what we're expecting the next few days. 
We're working to learn more about a motorcycle crash that killed a high ridge teenager. It happened around 10 last night. Highway Patrol says the 17 year old rider was driving north on Highway 141 just north of Fenton when the bike overturned, ejecting him. Witnesses told investigators a black SUV probably hit the teen and drove off. Anyone with information should contact Troop C headquarters at 636-300-2800. An investigation now underway after a train hit a minor in Granite City. This happened around 6.30 last night on the train tracks near Missouri Avenue. Officers say the victim suffered life-threatening injuries and had to go to the hospital. Right now, we don't have an update on that person's condition. Well, the city of Belnor is getting rid of its police department. In a letter posted on the city's website Friday, the mayor says workforce shortages and budget issues are to blame. The plan now is to have the St. John Police Department respond to emergencies until there's a permanent solution. Belnor is in North St. Louis County and has a population of about 1,300 people. Rain off to our west, and it will impact us, some of us, overnight, but it's tomorrow. What parts of tomorrow are wet and when we can expect to see the wind shift and warm us back up? Tomorrow marks six months since Hamas's deadly attack on Israel, kick-starting the war in Gaza. Protesters taking to the streets in Tel Aviv, demanding Prime Minister Netanyahu resign. They are calling for a new election and for the release of the remaining hostages held in Gaza. Since the start of the war, more than 30,000 lives have been claimed in Gaza. Just this week, seven World Central kitchen workers were killed in an Israeli attack. Israel also launched an airstrike against Iranian officials in Damascus, putting U.S. officials on high alert now for another attack. You've seen the, the war in Gaza spill over into attacks from Hezbollah in the north of Israel, attacks from Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria, and the Houthis firing missiles into the Red Sea to interrupt shipping from all over the world. So this is already escalating in a dangerous way. Prime Minister Netanyahu said Iran has been acting against Israel for years and his country will act accordingly. A plan to make it easier to open homeless shelters in St. Louis falls one vo vote short of moving forward. According to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, the Board of Aldermen voted against that proposal Friday. It would have required anyone who wants to open a shelter to get written permission from 33 percent of people within 500 feet of the facility. Currently, you need a majority to do so. The proposal followed last year's failed unhoused Bill of Rights plan. A new and inclusive playground is now open in Brentwood. We were there for the ribbon cutting this morning for Destination Playground. It includes splash pads and slides, all accessible for kids who have special needs. It has a roller slide designed to be inclusive for children with cochlear implants and an accessible swing and merry-go-round. We have been waiting for this playground to open. We live very close, so last year we were here when the park opened for grand opening day, and now we're here with our 19-day-old baby Dorothy for the playground to open. So we're very excited and happy to be here and happy that this is so close to our, to our home. The new playground is the latest in a series of improvements in the city of Brentwood. Well, Gary Frank is back with another look at our weather first forecast. He's closely monitoring conditions for that eclipse. Isn't that right, Gary? I know. I'm, I, I want it to be clear as can be. Yeah. You know, that's obviously the big story for us uh, as we've been uh, planning it out for years, right? But uh, if we could get it as clear as it was right now, we'd have a great viewing of it. And I think it's going to be close to that, but still something to look out for. There's some minor details that we'll focus on. Let's get you out, uh, out and about for Sunday because as we look downtown in many different areas, a lot of people enjoying the day and it's still 54. It's not bad, but the wind has really picked up. It's now out of the east southeast at 21 miles an hour. This is something that I think is going to impact you a lot tonight as the wind continues. Uh, temps in the low 60s today, but overnight it's not going to be 36 again. This is a pretty dynamic storm system that I talked about, which has snow on one side. You have fire danger behind it with extremely high winds gusting over 60, 70, 80 miles an hour in some case off the front range. And then the leading edge of it is a pretty well-defined front that shifts 
our wind, but until then, we don't have much going on. We do have a minor severe weather outlook for areas in central Illinois that it does include Mount Vernon, a few other spots on the Illinois side in the metro east for tomorrow as that system starts to work its way closer to us. This is not for tomorrow morning. We'll see clouds much thicker for tomorrow morning. We'll start to see that by uh, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, a few showers, maybe even a few storms by 9 and 10. But as that line starts to move through and interact with some warmer air and heating of the day. That's where we may see a few of those storms. I think primarily that's out of our area, but that's two, three, four o'clock. It's something that we'll watch. I think we'll clear out pretty quickly and get very windy behind this. So expect tomorrow to start out with opportunities for rain as we stay in the low to mid fifties, but we clear out pretty quickly by the afternoon. Those chances for rain really increase in the Metro East cloud cover this time of the year. It's kind of a coin flip when you talk about it months in advance. It's April. Obviously, anything can happen. We just showed you what goes on and a mix of these clouds show you that obviously in 2022 and 2018, you wouldn't be able to see it. But what are we going to see? Well, I think we're fortunate in the fact that no major storm systems are going to impact us, but there are some high clouds that settle in. Why is it important to talk about their high clouds at 1230 all the way to two? Well, it's because they may look like this where it's pretty clear you could see them. It's not all that bad where there's varying thickness, where there are spots where it's a little thicker and then it's much thicker and you can't see the sun at all. Right now, I think we're in pretty good shape, but we'll have to see where that is. It could be clear in Mount Vernon for you, but thicker clouds are somewhere else like Carbondale. We'll monitor that trend for the eclipse. Otherwise, it looks promising middle of the week, though, more rain. Better chances for showers here and there. Yeah, but we like promising. It is more promising words than it like could that. be. All right. Thank you, my friend. Corey, talk about a busy day. All right, let's talk about it. This might be the most jam-packed sports cast I've ever done in my life. Big saves, big scores, big crowds, big catches. As you can tell, big is the key word tonight. You don't want to miss this sports cast coming up after the break. This five on your side sports report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. I hope any person who has ever said St. Louis isn't a good sports town saw us on display today. There were over a hundred thousand fans downtown alone tonight to watch our teams. One hundred thousand. What a day. Let's get right to the action. We have to start with the season opener at the Battle Dome. Renegades and Battle Hawks in front of a new spring football record, 40,317 people. St. Louis loves football, period. Slow start, but it picked up. A.J. McCarron, Marcel Aitman, he's going to score. 8 nothing Battle Hawks. Second half, Arlington up three. McCarron, 53-yard bomb. Guess who? Aitman again, St. Louis back on top. Arlington going to wrestle the lead back late. They go up 24-21 at that point. Battlehawks take a field goal that tied it at 24, get one last drive. Mateo Durant breaks off a big one, 41-yard rush. Battlehawks are in field goal range with a chance to win it. They're going to run down the clock, and Andre Schmeitz nails the 22-yarder as time expires. Those cardiac Battlehawks win 27-24. The Battle Dome goes absolutely nuts. What a night for the Battlehawks. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. Down the road to City Park, Nelly was in the house as City SC hosted Dallas FC. And I'll tell you who has the heart of a champion, Roman Berkey. Spoiler, this game ended in a 0-0 draw, but it would have been about 4 or 5 to nothing without City star keeper. I mean, look at some of these saves. City had their chances too, just couldn't capitalize. Berkey was an absolute brick wall as City earns yet another draw. The Blues were the only team in action on the road today. They faced the bottom feeding Sharks in San Jose. Joel Hofer started a net. Look at this highlight save early on. Sharks got two past him in regulation, but the Blues battled back. Kairou 2-1. Then Blues net is empty. Braden Shen ties it with 2.30 left at 2. We go to overtime, but the Sharks would get the last laugh. William Eklund. That's his third of the game for the hat trick. Sharks win 3-2. They sweep the season series of the Blues and perhaps finally sink those slim Blues playoff chances. I've only seen them twice, and I think, you know, both games we outplayed them, but we, you know, in the second period, we seemed to get frustrated and get away from our game plan, and, you know, at the end of the day, it, it hurt us in both games. Now to the Cardinals, Stephen Matz looking for another strong start. He was good today, five innings, no runs, some dazzling defense behind him. Look at this double play, win, Gorman, Goldie, that'll do it. 
Cards get on the board thanks to Jordan Walker. He blisters one down the line. He's going to pull a nice swim move to get in safe for the double at second base. Well, as Contreras was out again, so Yvonne Herrera stepped up. He had another RBI, and another youngster was on fire as well. That's Victor Scott looking like Jim Edmonds in center field. What a catch. Cards win 3-1 to one thanks to another strong performance by the defense. Still no errors for this team this season. Got a group of people that are looking to take care of the baseball and do the little things right. And I know that we say little things, but they amount to big things. So it's been cool to see. The guys have done a really nice job. They're focused every pitch. We're not taking a pitch off. And um, it's helped our, our staff quite a bit. WNIT championship game. Slew against Minnesota at SIUE. Billikens dominated this one pretty much the whole way. This is in the second half. And there are two of tournament MVP Peyton Kennedy's 19 points. Slew hit 11 three-pointers today. They were deadly from deep and beat the Gophers 69 to 50 to claim the WNIT trophy. The Bills won 11 of their last 12 games to finish the year. What a run, what a team. Whenever this happens, it's just it's like time slows down a little bit. Um, you think about all the memories of the journey and the parts that were hard and the parts that were beautiful and you just look at your women and think, wow, look what they just did. And as a staff, we just want to create an environment where they can rise up to their highest level of themselves. We call it Arate, and they did it tonight. Earlier today, the Billiken men's team made headlines by officially announcing former Indiana State coach Josh Schertz as their new head coach. Here's part of a statement from Schertz. He will be formally introduced on Monday morning at Chaffetz Arena. Mm. Yeah, That's that bad. was a lot. Take it was a, a busy breath. day. Mostly good results, though. <laughs> you know, I like what the card said about you got to do the little things right. Yes. And then that'll pay off. That defense is definitely showing up this year. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts? It's going to be nice tomorrow. I think it rains out of here just in time for them to play at 115. Ooh, all right. We like it. That's all of our time, my friends. Thanks for the company. Saturday Night Live is next.